Some have brought in strict limits on how many of certain goods we can buy. Others are introducing reserved time slots for older or more vulnerable people to get their shopping. Well, let's talk now to Kate Hardcastle, who's a consumer and retail uh, expert. Morning to you, Kate. Um, How much of a problem has all this panic buying and stockpiling caused our supermarkets? It's caused a significant problem to us, the consumer, because when we see, particularly on social media, the images of the shelves that are barren and the fact that stock isn't there, and we hear the stories that people have been into a supermarket and recounted that perhaps more vulnerable people, older people, haven't just been able to get the basics, it breeds a panic in all of us. Now, the reason panic buying occurs is because it's actually people trying to, in some crazy way, try and get hold of a situation, try and get some control back in their lives but obviously the way to do it is to do it sensibly and by taking the products only that we and our family truly need and not in excess and we've got to make sure that we reassure the public it's just not necessary and try and stop sharing the images. Yeah so a lot of supermarkets are now um, as we say putting limits on on what you can buy and introducing sort of certain timings for, for certain parts of the population. Why didn't they do that earlier? Well, that's the kind of feed the nation plan that we talked about a few weeks ago when we started to explain that supermarkets do have a resilience, a business resilience planning and contingencies in place for when any of these things might occur. Now, they can't imagine what some of the scenarios might be, but they have to work out that the supply chain will be there to feed the nation. And it's quite staged and they're doing it bit by bit. So the first thing would be reduced quantities of products that were in demand. Second, we might start to see, which we're already seeing, shortening of operating hours, more use of or click and collect services. I'm just going to mention online at this point as well. And it said then we might start to see a reduction in the variety of the brands that we normally buy. If you think about a normal supermarket, we we're inundated with tens of thousands of products. We don't really need all of that choice. So you might start to see a reduction just purely onto the basics. But with online, a lot of people have turned to that when they've seen these images. And we've seen a huge challenge of online deliveries too, which means those needing online because of self-isolation or self-distancing are struggling to get the slots they need. There is one big saviour in this, and this is local. A lot of independent shops I've been to, about 50 nationwide now, have got good stocks. They're ready to help you and serve you. And if you do use your local stores, you will actually add money back into to vulnerable communities. It's a really good point. A lot of them are better stocked and, and have still have the supplies of things, that the soaps and the toilet roll that people are after. That's absolutely right. And also remember, when you feel like you need the quick fix, like the sanitizers and the hand liquid hand wash, soap works just as well. You'll see lots of tutorials. There's brilliant information on the BBC websites. So there are, there are alternatives when you see these stock outages. I wonder, across Europe, we see now that people are queuing to get into supermarkets. They're only letting a certain number of people in. Uh, you have to stay back from, um, you have to give people distance. Could we see that introduced here? Absolutely. There will be other measures as well. As I say, as well as operating times being reduced, there will probably be control entrances and exits. There will be measures where they might look at enhanced click and collect. So you might just drive in and have a a non-touch delivery into your car. You might look at boxes of pre-made family weekly shopping where, again, you don't have as much choice over the brands, but you have all the basics in there. These are all things that might step in. The supermarkets consistently remind us that there is enough stock for everyone. But the creation of the empty shelves has been the panic when you go in there and you think, oh my goodness, this epidemic I've heard about is true. I better get everything I can too. Now, a well-stocked cupboard, a well-stocked freezer, that's going to last you months as a family. And particularly if you look after that food, I've put lots of tips as I can on my social media of how you can make food go as far as possible. Kate, thank you very much indeed. Kate Hardcastle there, who's an expert in consumer and retail habits.